Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. And today I thought I would do something a little interesting. I was writing a chapter in my book, which you can check out here. We'll see. I don't know, put a link somewhere. My, my new book, if you want to get some free chapters, called The Complete Software Developer's Career Guide. And I'm almost done with the book at this point. I'm, I was writing the, one of the last chapters about side projects. And I was ruminating back on some of my old side projects and how they affected my career and what I learned from them. So I came across what you can see here, or I remembered that I had a Palm Pilot application that I wrote back in the day. Apparently, this was in 2002. <laughs> when I was working on on this so so quite a ways back there and I thought I would go over my my little project this this side project that I had done way 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 back when and talk a little bit about kind of the value of doing side projects what I learned from this and and just show you because it's it's pretty interesting so so this was at, I had the the website, the name Smoimo Software, which is some nickname that I got way back when, and I ended up using it as an online handle for, for a long period of time. I eventually abandoned it because, you know, starting your name with SS is, is sort of weird, but it was kind of cool at the time. And now I'm like, well, maybe that is kind of cool. <laughs> but... Let's uh, let's take a look here. So, what I did was I created this this website, okay, and I learned some pretty interesting skills here. I mean, now my graphic design skills, I'm I'm impressed by them. I, I realize they're not that great, but I had created this whole logo and design of this web page. Remember, this is like 2002 when I when I first did this, and so I, I learned a lot about using Photoshop and how to kind of construct a web page. It's not the greatest web page ever, but I learned how to write XHTML and some CSS and how to get this all sort of working. And I learned how to create an animate GIF. How's that? Now, the the application itself, I called Mally. And what it was, was it's a Magic the Gathering Life counter. You can check out the, the gallery here. Kind of cool. What I what I set up is a very basic level. Now this was back at the time when I, I was sort of ahead of the game here, because at this time most Palm Pilot applications they expected to do, you to use the little little stencil or what is it like the the stylus, okay, in order to click things. But I said, well, I want to make buttons that are big enough that I could touch with my finger and, the, and people didn't really touch palm polish with their finger back then they used the stylus and so that it'd, it'd be more convenient so i was a little bit ahead of the the game there and i had created this life counter for playing the the trading card game magic the gathering which i was i was pretty big into at that point I actually was up in the kind of professional level at one point playing this this game and so I created you know, a screen where you could basically subtract one life or five, made pretty easy. You could roll dice because often you needed to roll dice. You could reset the life, keep track of your life and your opponent's life, which this is really important. You have to understand when you're playing kind of at the competitive level of, of Magic the Gathering, you know, I've got light here. Let's turn on the light. How's that? That's better. Anyway, you wanted to keep track of your opponent's life so they didn't cheat. This was critical. Like we would do this on paper and you would, you know, you'd be tracking your life and your opponent's life. This is how professionals, this is what you could tell someone was was good at magic and they had played in a lot of competitions. If they're tracking your life as as well as as their life, and they would confirm it, right? So this was the other thing is you'd say, okay, so that I have you at 17 life now. Is that correct? So that what you have, and you'd confirm it all along the way. Because you've been burned enough times where someone was cheating that you know that you need to do that. So then I had in here, what else did I had? This I had a drop down menu. Welcome to the drop down menu where you can customize Magic Life with your name and DCI number. I also created this virtual tokens thing here. So <laughs> I, have to sh I have to show the drop down menu because that that's so cool. And then this dice roller, which was was pretty fun to implement. And then I had this oh multiple players, right? So if you if you have the 
a bunch of players. You could track all of their lives if you're doing a, a multiple player game, which was pretty cool. And then this virtual token. I was very proud of this virtual token feature because in, in Magic, you'd often have these tokens. So you'd use like a penny or a something to as a token. But I created this thing so you could create virtual tokens that could show if they're tapped or untapped. And you could kill them, you could edit them, you could change the names of them, and you could give them properties like flying, and then they'd show little wings here. So I thought that was cool. And then you could put in your DCI number, which is what you use for, for tournaments, and it would store it in there. So that was, yeah, that was, that was pretty fun. And then you could register the application. <laughs> I, I think I'd started this at maybe $10, but then I put it to $4.95. And, you know, you can see here my little chart of the registered version. You get all this stuff and the non-registered version. You don't get five player. You don't get virtual tokens customization or this five turn clock. So, yeah. And then what you would do. So if you wanted to register this, what you would do is you'd put in your hot sync ID. So with Palm, I don't even remember how this worked. And then you'd click this buy now button. I wonder where this will take me. I doubt it'll work. Oh, takes me to PayPal <laughs> to send money. And and what would happen, what, what I had implemented with this, this was way back. Remember, this is 2002. So there's not a not a lot as far as, you know, doing e-commerce. But what I did was the way that this worked, if I remember correctly, is you'd buy now, right? You'd send this hot sync ID. It would go with the, with the payment with, with PayPal through that button. And then... What would happen is that, oh, oh yeah, you could mail me, <laughs> you could mail me a check. Too. Some people mailed me checks, okay, or mailed me money. Four ninety five, you know, you got get some change. But anyway, you could take this this hot sync ID, you'd pay through there, and then if I remember correctly, PayPal had this, they still have this instant payment notification. So what would happen is they would then you could you could say when you got a payment go ahead and send this data to this this website so i had this on my website i had this cgi program and the only way i could figure out how to write it at this time was in Perl. i didn't know Perl, so i had to learn Perl, and i basically parsed this instant ipn that that came back and i found some code that i could kind of copy and i figured out i got made sure that they actually paid the right amount that they paid at least for, you know whatever the price was and then i got their hot sync id and i got their email address and what i did was i had this little copy protection kind of registration thing that i had built inside the application and so you could take this this hot sync id and i'd run it through this algorithm the same algorithm that existed on the on the server that i'd written in Perl. I'd written in C inside of this this Mali application, and what it would do is it would basically come up with a code that they could put in that would that would be based on this hot sync ID. So I had some kind of you know proprietary algorithms to to, to unlock this thing. And so if you got this, you'd get an email automatically, right? Once you got the payment, it will generate what your code is and then send you the code. So very primitive. You know registration but again this is like what you know 2002 when i had done this but yeah that's what you know that's what i created i i had some success selling this i don't, I don't know how much i i sold how many copies but i was at one point i was making like you know a few sales a day i think on this and, and there wasn't really a really good way to advertise right at, at the time so i remember what did i do there was like there were sites where you could you could list your palm OS application. So I listed on there. There were Magic the Gathering sites where there was like this this magazine or something. I can't remember. But I think I emailed them and they listed it in there. And there was like an online forum and they listed it. And so I was getting, you know, a few people that would buy it or I'd go to Magic tournaments and people would look at that and they'd be like, whoa, that's so cool. That's awesome. I never seen that before. And and I would get some sales from there. But you know, the thing is like it wasn't it wasn't a big money maker it probably could have been better like I, I mean now that i look at this and i'm like wow i was doing this in 2002 i i should have gone with this i should have taken this to the next step it was that was the time when it was so easy to sell online because there was no competition imagine creating you know what i what i you know a bunch of stuff back then but you know whatever but 
I, what I, what I learned from it really, like I said, was I had to develop my own website and figure out how to host it. I had no idea, right? Then this is 2002. Again, I have to remind you, I had to learn how to develop a Palm OS application in C. So I improved my C skills and how to write and integrate with the, the Palm OS APIs, which was not the easiest thing in the world. Do a little bit of graphic design and stuff and use the Palm OS emulator. So that was that was pretty fun. And then, you know, like I said, creating the website, doing all of that, the HTML, the CSS. I had to learn how to do Perl. I had to learn how payments worked with PayPal on the web. There was quite a bit of stuff from doing the side project that really helped me in my career. And I would say that actually one of the most important things that this did was it gave me some confidence. I mean, there, there's in my ability to develop an application, right? At this point as a programmer, right? This is again, 2002, I don't have a lot of experience, right? This is, this is something that was really pivotal for me in, in gaining that confidence because I had built this application. It was working. I was using it. People were paying me money for the thing. I didn't realize how phenomenal that, that was at the time, at least, you know, now I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did it way back then. But that, that, that was something that definitely helped me in my career, right? Because at that point I gained a lot of confidence because I, I had done this and I learned a lot of skills. So that's why, you know, side project is definitely something that I highly recommend that you do. We had a, a post, I didn't write the post, but there was a guest post on Simple Programmer, which you can check out about side projects by Latish. It's pretty good. Talks about his side project and it's pretty cool. He, he's got SQL smash. He's been getting a lot of, a lot of clicks from that, from that article. But yeah, that I thought I would share with you <laughs> little little blast from the past of my my own side project and it was pretty fun developing for Palm OS. It was it was definitely, you know, an experience. There wasn't very many people that were developing Palm OS applications back then or trying to sell them online. And it, it definitely changed a, a lot of things for me. Like I said, one of the biggest ones was confidence. So I, I definitely highly recommend that you do some kind of side project, that you start some kind of side project. Again, if you're interested in reading the chapter in my book, it's, it's towards the end, so it won't be out for a while, but you can sign up here, of course, you know, and you'll get the, the chapters as they come out for the Complete Software Developers Career Guide. All right, well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this, this little blast to the past, blast in the past here. And if you like this video, if you wanna get more videos like this one, click the subscribe button and I will talk to you next time. Take care.